Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to the Women of Vision show. I hope everyone is having a wonderful Tuesday, enjoying this weather before it gets totally crazy. So, oh, it's so nice outside. It's I love gonna it. It's hot, though. We're going to oh. die. No time to acclimate, just like Reading normally does. <laughs> yes, anyways, welcome to the Women of Vision show. Uh, this is Haley Clendenning. This is Maurice Brown. And Sarah. Yay, our unicorn. Um, and we are honored to have Haley Anderson in the studio with us tonight. Thank you. Thank How you. are you doing? I'm um, good. Enjoying the weather. I know, right? Yeah. It has been nice, except for the wind. I think I complained about the wind last week, too, so mm -hmm. you guys are probably noticing a theme. Yeah. Shout out to my mom. We hate the wind. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is. But um, anyways, it is nice. I hope everyone's enjoying it because it's going to get hot this weekend. Um, but welcome to the show. Hopefully we have some new listeners. If you guys are new to the show, Women of Vision is basically just women collaborating and um, building a community. Yeah. A sisterhood. Exactly. And friendship. Support. <laughs> just all the awesome stuff. Yeah. And uh, definitely trying to highlight and support our community. So that's a cool thing. And if you guys have been listening to the show, thanks for tuning back in and joining us again because we appreciate it. Yeah, thank uh, you. Yeah. So, Haley, my dear, I'm just going to read a quick little bio, and then we'll kind of elaborate from there. Oh, okay, Haley Clendenning, you are kind of fancy today with your Chromebook in oh, front of you. Well, you. I'm going to keep it real. What's I happening? just didn't. Uh, I was I I was tired, and I didn't write. I'm a handwritten person. I like to write, but I didn't do my notes in my notebook. When I wrote questions well, you or, you know, legit. content for the show. So, yeah, now I look like a, like a big girl. <laughs> Not old school with your notes all. Hey, I like written form. I can't help myself. Um, but, Haley, you grew up in Sacramento and attended Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, which I love that area. Yes. I'm not sure why you came back. Yeah, I was going to say that. I'm like, it's pretty hard to stay down there. Is it? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's probably like being like from, well... Never mind. That's a terrible <laughs> comparison. I was going to say Chico State, but it's nothing alike. <laughs> I would want to stay in San Luis Obispo. Um, but you received your architectural license and um, additional certifications in sustainability, health, and wellness in our built environment, mm -hmm. which makes me have a lot of questions. So I'm like, <laughs> what is that? Good um, and then you also began your business one shop in 2018 when you came back up from um, Cal Poly, which is a small design forward architecture firm here in town. Mm -hmm. And then also exciting, you were married last October. So mm -hmm. congratulations. Yeah, mm -hmm. And uh, I'm also very curious too about, you had mentioned that you guys are really interested in investing your time in the community. So yeah, absolutely. obviously that is what we're all about here. So we'll definitely dive into that. But like we were saying, what exactly brought you to Reading after being down in uh, Cal Poly and from the Sacramento area? Yeah, um, so I graduated from Cal Poly in 2011 and uh, architecture firms weren't really hiring at the time. We were still kind of reeling from uh, the recession and I was struggling to find a job down there and actually it's all over the west coast and my dad actually was offered a transfer up here and I just kind of said why not you know if it's not working out in Sacramento we'll give Reading a shot I've never really been here before I was gonna say like yeah. have you did you have family here did nope. you visit well, nice. I just moved up here so fresh start time. and within two months I had a job offer and all of a sudden everything was working out so that's really amazing right decision yeah it when it flows that's like so rewarding when yeah. it happens the right way and it just kind of like it's not really work and yeah. effort yeah it kind of reaffirms that you're doing the right thing the right place. yeah like yeah. i hear the opposite like it takes them quite a few months to find a job here <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah i was uh, really really lucky was it in architecture yeah uh, okay uh, nichols melberg and rosetta it's a bigger firm here in town okay. oh yeah i'm familiar with them yeah i worked there for about six years nice wonderful so what i mean it's kind of Backing up a little bit, what exactly ignited your passion in architecture? This is the, the age-old question that always ends in the word Lego. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> oh, my God, um, my kid has a future in, the, in architecture. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't, I think 90% of architects will start that story with Legos. I just steal on my brothers as a kid. Okay. Just uh, someone suggested it to me when I was young, and that's just all it's ever been. Never really questioned it. And uh, we had family down in the uh, San Luis Obispo region, so I was familiar with the school and just 
You knew I wanted to be an architect. You knew there was a school of architecture that was pretty good. And just kind of lined it all up and never turned back. Did you play Minecraft too? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm a little, little bit old. So, so isn't that kind of like a newer thing? I guess. I was just curious. Oh. She looks young. I know, that's true. That's true. I just assume everyone's close to my age. Yeah. I'm old, so. No. Um, that's interesting, though, because I that really is kind of a way to open your creativity mm -hmm. and build. Have you watched the Lego Masters show? I have not, no. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, I have not one, either. One show, yeah. Okay, Sarah's watched it. You guys should watch it. It's really great, and it's a bunch Send of adults. Oh, yeah. That are... I imagine I, if I did watch it, it would become like a... A whole little obsession. Oh. My best to just leave alone. <laughs> yeah, amazing. It could become a guilty pleasure. So yeah. <laughs> what um? I mean, what do you think? Since you've kind of always had an intrigue in it, it's always been something that you've enjoyed. What is your? If you had to choose a favorite part about like architecture, what is it that really like get you know gets you yeah, excited yeah. about it? Um, it's definitely going to be the creative problem solving. It's uh, there's just early part in the architecture process that we call the schematic design or conceptual design and I like to call it playing professional Tetris. Um, it's just a lot of fun and just uh, thinking outside the box professionally. Um, someone gives you a problem that they're having and or a kind of dream idea and it's my job to figure out how to bring that to reality um, and using any tools I can think of and uh, just really try to think outside the box. And What's been um, your most favorite project so far? Oh, that's a really tricky one. Um, <laughs> hmm. Well, I let's just start with roots. I mean, yeah, it's on the it's right down the street, and most people who are listening are probably familiar with it. Yeah, um, that was just a really fun project because Ricky and Mariah were all about creating a, a unique uh, location here in town, and we wanted to give that building a whole new identity. Yeah, well, because so, it was it was windy. It was windy. <laughs> yeah. So it was really hard to kind of get the windy stigma away from that. Right. Yeah. Right. Because literally, I mean, since I was a I grew up here, mm -hmm. so it's like that building has always been associated with mm -hmm. the Wendy's. So yeah. it is really, really cool. You guys did a great job mm -hmm. with making it its own space, yep. and like you said, kind of creating its own um, new vibe that's yep. not Wendy esque. Yeah, and it's it's very unique vibe to Roots, and I think we were pretty successful in creating that. that yeah, does. I love how like it's it's all just airy and bright in there. So you you guys designed it that way too. Yeah, we just wanted it to be clean, and simple. Um, light colors, light, light and airy, and then uh, just like their product that they're selling, it's very clean mm -hmm. nutrition. Exactly. Like to keep that feeling throughout. Yeah, you you do get that feeling, and you kind of want to stay in there too. It smells so good. <laughs> it does. Well, it does have just like a really a, a very cool vibe, and just um, it, I don't know, it fits really well. That's yeah. that's really cool. That you you're very creative then, because I feel like as soon as somebody would be like, "Here's my problem," I'd be like, "Well." We're going to have to find somebody else <laughs> yeah. that can figure this out for you. <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was great working with Hurricane Mariah, too, because they're both very creative people and very uh, involved. And so uh, part of the design was that they wanted to be involved in making it. So we uh, at one shop, we have a plasma cutter. And, and so all of those metal panels on the outside, we actually would design them, and, and Ricky cut them himself. Like, he brought the steel sheets in, oh, how cut cool. them on our machine, and took them, had them painted and installed them. So it was all... It was very in-house, uh, very collaborative. It was a lot of fun. That's nice. awesome. We'll have to get a little more detail about that because it's already time for our first commercial break. So it's so fast. We'll let. It's, I'm going to read it this okay, time. Okay, <laughs> I was going to say, is it the the unicorn? The sponsor the unicorn. <laughs> sponsor unicorn. Sponsor unicorn. Week. <laughs> yeah, she, she, we're going to just tag team this. <laughs> Love it. Um, yes, uh, thank you sponsors for um, keeping us on air. Uh, really appreciate you guys. Linda Lingo, financial coach. She's actually speaking for us this Friday at 9 a.m. at Heritage Roasting Co. in Shasta Lake. So come join us. Uh, Sarah Back with Legal Shield and Identity Theft Shield. Jesse Baldwin, certified health coach, free coaching services, 530-355-5929, and go change with Jesse. Bargain Books and More, located 836 Butte Street. She is open now, you guys, Monday through Saturday, 9 to 6 p.m. Everbloom Skincare, Azalea Avenue, Results Driven Facials. And I saw something that she's got a facial for the month, so I think that everyone's allowed to do facials again, so I'm really excited. That yes. would be great. Yes, I, know. I I'm like the moment I found out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So definitely thank you to all of our sponsors for 
putting this together, making this happen for us. And we'll be back here shortly on the Women of Vision show here on KCNR. Hello, welcome back everybody to the Women of Vision show here on KCNR. And we are sitting down and visiting with Haley Anderson tonight, who is the owner of One Shop. Mm -hmm. And, oh, co-owner. Owner. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we were just discussing a little bit about you guys designed the new roots. Yep. And mm -hmm. how amazing and beautiful it is over mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And it was it had me thinking, is that, you said that the owners of roots were uh, very hands-on mm -hmm. and helped kind of with the design. Yeah. Is that a challenge for you when, when you have clients that are not, they don't have a vision for it or they don't really have a lot of creative input for you or do you kind of enjoy that because then it gives you a lot of free reign to like it goes both ways okay both ways. So, you know, sometimes uh, you have people who are just like hands off they're like i trust you impress me and that's that's a lot of fun well a lot of pressure too but um and then sometimes we'll have uh, clients who are like i want x y and z and i have all the pictures and sometimes that's really hard to make work within uh, other parameters that they give us, so it's just always uh, a puzzle to solve, always something um, where you gotta be creative and you're solving kind of that problem. Yeah. Keeps you on your toes then, that's for yes. sure. Oh, it's <laughs> um, so, as you were getting into, you know, design and architecture, did you have any major influences or like um, anyone that you looked at that did design that you were like, that's <laughs> what I really love, that continued to inspire the way yeah. that you design now? Yeah, well there's, um, there's so many fantastic, inspiring architects around the whole world, um, but I definitely, if I had to pick a favorite, it would be, um, he's a Swiss architect named Peter Zumthor. He won uh, kind of the highest prize in architecture a few years back. Um, but he does a lot of uh, European projects, and he has this way of working with materials where uh, it's really subtle, and they're, uh, it's like, his projects are like walking into a work of art kind of thing, where, he did a museum in uh, Cologne, Germany, where he built this giant brick building around uh, the ruins of a cathedral that had been bombed in World War II. And you oh, just wow. walk in there and you just like, you're just in that moment. Just his handling of, of materials and the phenomena being in that space is really inspiring. It's like, if I could do that, if I could meet that feeling and work one day, you know, down the road, that's the dream. But, yeah, that's, well, because. Okay, this, forgive me, because I don't mean for this to come off wrong, <laughs> but I feel like architecture, if you, especially if it's not something that is um, exciting or really eye-catching, mm -hmm. it can be totally lost to yeah. people, you know what I mean? It's just run-of-the-mill. It's every building that you go into, mm -hmm. you know, so that's, I, I was curious what inspires you, because it is, you have to find a way, I guess, to set your design apart from... Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, what... I know what my goal is, I guess, when it comes to architecture, is to find a way of creating spaces and buildings, projects that have a unique character, that uh, add to the character of their community and of the neighborhood. Uh, it's not something that it just draws on elements around it, or not something that you see repeated time and time again. Uh, right. I, I want each project to be of itself and of the community, and, and to be just as important to the people around it as the people who are using it. Yeah. Like, I have to say, I think it's so boring when you drive into a neighborhood, because you do both. You don't yeah. just do business no, do architecture, you residential do residential, residential as oh, well. that's awesome. Um, when you go, I love it when it's a nice, beautiful new neighborhood, but when every house looks the flip insane. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Or there's yeah. like, okay, we've got design one, two, three, yeah. and then we repeat design one, two, three. Mm -hmm. Well, that's how you know there was not an architect involved. Yeah. That's sure. a good point. <laughs> that is like, a very um, good point. What do they call those neighborhoods? Like, it's just... A, a tract. Like yeah. A tract. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, we, you talked a little bit, or we actually haven't talked about it yet, but in your, uh, in your bio, you talked about that you have certifications in sustainability and health and wellness. Mm -hmm. A, what the heck is that? How does that tie into architecture? Yeah. And then I'm also curious, do you think that that's probably one of the things too that helps elevate your design and mm. and architecture? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. So um, one of my certifications is uh, called a, a LEAD AP. A LEAD is just an abbreviation for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. Uh, it means that I am certified to help projects um, go after LEED certification. So it's like you've been to the Sheraton Hotel, you see the big beautiful plaque on the wall that says, hey, this is a LEED silver, LEED gold building. Um, I'm one of the people who's certified to help achieve that plaque on the wall. Uh, certification that the building 
uh, made strides to be sustainable in its material choices and its energy use, mm. um, just from an environmental perspective and also from an occupant perspective, meaning they're trying to create a, a good environment for the people who are going to be there. Yeah. And then uh, in addition to that, I have, uh, a, it's called a WELL AP. Uh, it's a very new certification, but uh, it's focused, so while LEED is focusing on kind of on the environmental aspects, okay. the WELL AP focuses on the health and wellness of the building occupants. So everything uh. from air quality, water quality, having views, you know, something worth uh, keeping you sane mm -hmm. in the building. Mm -hmm. um, it just really takes the psychology and the, the physical health of the building occupants um, very seriously. So you're, you're trying to create an environment that works for the occupants, not just one that you know, financially makes sense. From an outside perspective or developer perspective, you're really caring about the people who are in the building. And gotcha. you're also like um, utilizing sustainable products yeah. or yes. eco-friendly um, products? Yes, with the LEED certification, absolutely. So you'd be breaking it down um, between like rapidly renewable materials or locally sourced materials. Mm. You would get credits or points for all of those different um, elements that you're able to incorporate into the building. So do you think that's more of a trend now in architecture going forward? Yes. Yeah, yeah, so uh, with LEED, LEED's been around for quite a while. And the California Building Code has actually integrated a lot of those elements into the building code, so they're actually required. Which uh, is awesome. Mm -hmm. But then on the uh, well side of things, uh, that's a, a little bit newer. Uh, it's only been around for a few years, and uh, I think only really big cities are kind of diving into it right now. Uh, so I think I'm the only person with that certification, like north of Sacramento. Uh, Heck yeah, girl! Yeah, that's it's, so it's cool. something that I'm really interested in because. Uh, I really like looking at spaces and projects and trying to make them uh, sustainable and you know, it comes back to that problem solving, trying to create a space that, that really works for the people mm -hmm. um, inside and outside mm -hmm. and it's just something to really, you know, we're making these design decisions anyway, yeah. so might as well have the information to make the right decision. Yeah, I was going to say, so do you guys, I mean, how does that... Are there like psychological studies that you're doing of the of potential clientele or the clientele that people that they're trying to attract to these businesses? Like, how do you decide, <laughs> you know, the wellness or what would be intriguing or um, draw people into any particular location? Uh, it doesn't quite go into that level of detail. It's more um, things that are easy to collect data on, like water quality and air quality. Mm. Okay. Um, it gets all the way down to nutrition, like buildings that offer cafeterias, like making sure that you offer actually nutritious food. It's just a way of quantifying uh, how healthy the building is for the people. Um, That's really cool. Yeah, um, have you seen those buildings that have like warning you're around, like, you know, like um, the, the, if you're in this vicinity, you're expo automatically exposed to like some kind of toxic mm -hmm. something. I've seen those in like public buildings. Have you not seen them? Like they're no. even in schools. But so I'm just I curious if that's like the counter of that. Yeah, yeah like, I think just they're gonna be old buildings. That yeah, have, uh, old probably have like lead paint, huh? That need to be, paint, huh? mm -hmm. need to be uh, mitigated at some point. My God, I need to be more observant. Yeah, no, there you'll see them. I know they're Have you noticed those, sir? Yeah, I mean, when I moved here from Texas, I noticed everything in California basically kills you. Yep. So <laughs> it's the warning that they put on like everything. Like this has been known in the state of California that it's yeah, cancer. Yeah, that one. Yeah, Sweet. and if you're in this, if and really old building, here, you're exposed to it. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. well, okay, this is really a public place. <laughs> yeah. So the idea of having a, a well, a well certified mm -hmm. building would be. Acknowledging that hey, we took steps to make sure that we're using paint that is low VOC that's not going to release toxins into your uh, breathing environment or into the mechanical system, and we're making sure we're getting enough fresh air, uh, and uh, we're making sure that the water is is of good quality, and you have views and uh, just access to things, like yeah. stairs, right, to make good health decisions, air, good good ventilation, um, mm -hmm. yeah, good air quality. Such, that's important. That's like stuff I haven't. Well, you think wow. about it. I'm concerned about so many things, but yeah. that is not one of them. But water, that is something that, like, as soon as I get to a hotel, I'm like, do we, is this water okay? Do I need <laughs> to drink still, bottled water yeah. while, the whole time I'm here, you know? It's true. Like, you, you, you still go to a building where they don't have that, um, you know, the machine that gives you, uh, you know, that you can fill up your water bottle. 
No right. one gets filtered. Mm -hmm. What is that machine? Well, I'm just lost at words today. Just well, at home it's me called up. a Brita, but I think it the, <laughs> the large like the large yeah. tank. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. But anyway, like oh yeah, yeah where you can just set your bottle up there and kind of yeah. and just have access to uh, good filtered um, water. Interesting, because it's like stuff that you almost expect without really putting a lot of thought mm -hmm. into. So that's very interesting. Um, and we're already coming up on our next commercial break, so. Jeez. It's fine. I know. I'm so intrigued because I don't know anything about this. So it's I, like, I don't either. It's really cool. Um, but yes, we definitely want to, again, thank all of our sponsors for making our show happen. You ladies are amazing. And gentlemen, there's one of you. We, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Deborah Mitchell with Oils for Young and Healthy Living. Michelle Lane Coaching, located in Chico, California. She's a transformational facilitator and elevate workshops and retreats for women. And results-driven life coach, helping you to get to the roots of what's holding you back. Lit from within at 2449 Athens Avenue. They're going through some like revamping in their studio and they're gonna have a reveal soon, so I'm excited. They're um, so awesome. It yeah. looks good. I went in there and did a yoga class, saw oh, some of what right. they've been doing, and I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah, it looks good. <laughs> um, Bev Gray, um, nutritious drink, and um, all fired up at 1796 Churn Creek Road, pottery, painting, life casting, board art. Play prints and it's just fun in there. You guys gotta check it out. And Dana Grant, Master Intuitive Life Coach. Heck Thank yeah. you, girls. It's gonna be at the Women's Summit. So yes. I keep I'm talking about loss for words. It's not just you. <laughs> it's me too. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's this weird Tuesday. Anyone else having a weird Tuesday? Anyways, um, we will be back here shortly on the Women of Vision show here on KCNR. Just learning here today. I love it. Getting some good information from the lovely Haley Anderson, who is the owner of One Shop, which is a really cool architecture firm here in town. And um, yeah, we were just kind of talking a little bit about some of your certifications, mm -hmm. which are amazing, by the way. In case you guys missed it, she's like the only person north of Sacramento, I think you said? I think so. It's, that it's has these new. certifications. So... Mm -hmm. Anyways. The well certification. Yes. Health and, and wellness. Anyways, I just think it's rad. And she's a woman, so. I was going to say that, but, you know. Boom. <laughs> you guys need an architect. She's the one. Um, but that's really, really quite amazing. So I was kind of thinking a little bit about that. And do you think that that helps make it, like, your company and what you do part of your, like, niche, you think? Uh, so I was thinking pretty hard on this question, and I, uh, I have to say I, I don't think so. I think okay, it's something just that, a bonus. Yeah, it's kind of a bonus, but uh, in, in Reading, at least I found, you know, being out on my own for the last two years is that there's not really a whole lot of room to have a niche. Uh, cause okay. I, I found that Reading, the needs just change. So like every week we get different, completely different types of projects that call us. Um, everything from car fire rebuilds to, uh, to kind of office tenant improvements to restaurants. We get a lot of restaurants. Um, it's just kind of being a generalist, mm -hmm. and I feel like I'm I'm young and I'm really enjoying that because I it feels like a challenge every time I get a new project. It's just like a whole new set of rules mm -hmm. to learn, um, and I'm I just I really enjoy being able to practice across the spectrum, mm -hmm. and I feel like it makes it stronger each time I approach a new project. Just like I've got a lot more. We've got like this repertoire it. that you've yeah. already dealt with, so it's like yeah. you can kind of pull out your rolodex and be like, okay. Last time I did yeah. kind of something like this, mm -hmm. but... Instead of, like, doing just, you know, modern houses or just restaurants or, or just office buildings, I'm, I'm learning a whole lot more and it's able to really build up my portfolio yeah. uh, and our company's portfolio. Well, and it probably helps keep it fresh, too, so mm -hmm. you don't get... I mean, I'm sure yeah. you would not allow yourself to be bored, yeah. per se, <laughs> anyways, you know what I mean, being mm -hmm. a creative, but I guess, you know, it probably would get if you were yeah. doing the same... Yeah. type of thing and over and over it would be such a small community as well right there's not really i don't in my experience limited experience there's not really enough enough quantity of any one of those things to really uh, keep you busy throughout uh, a whole year so uh, it's really responding to what we're seeing that reading needs and it, it's just it changes every day and we're loving it so gotcha so probably i mean would you say that just kind of your creativity and problem solving is something that sets you apart from other architecture yeah, firms yeah. here in town yeah um, that and uh, both Tyler, my business partner, and I are, we just really love learning. So we just, every every opportunity we can, we will learn uh, a whole new set of skills to solve a new problem. So that's really cool. That is, because like I said, I'm sure that helps you beat burnout. Because yeah. some people, mm -hmm. I feel like you go to work, you know, and you do the same mm -hmm. 
thing every oh, yeah. day. Mm-hmm. And every day for me is entirely different. Yeah, so I can't exciting. imagine. Yeah. That's really exciting to get to go in and be like, ooh, what are we going to do today? How do we figure this out? <laughs> yeah, yesterday I worked on a fire station. Today I'm working on a house. Tomorrow a fa- different, uh, in addition to a house. I mean, every day is completely different. So do you have like a process, like a creative process you go through, like if you're facing something new? Mm-hmm. Like what's oh, your... Oh, yeah, that's a good yeah. question. Uh, they're all so different. Uh, it really depends on the problem, uh, the, the problem that I'm trying to solve. Um, but a good old fashioned sketchbook and pins. Mm. So, really do you break out the Lego sets? And <laughs> <laughs> I know. Not quite. Uh, I Lego sets and wine, real quick. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's going to get real weird up in here. <laughs> I'm uh, really big on kind of the old school modeling where you just mm. kind of cut up like little cardboard or called chipboard and just build like little studies. And uh, now I've got a laser cutter, so it gets really cool. But. <laughs> That would be fun to play with in itself. Yeah. I would have so much fun with that. <laughs> Sarah's going to um, show up and be like, let me play with your laser cutter. I know. Do you let your, like, you know, the, the people that rent the space use those tools? Oh, uh, we did. We did. Mm-hmm. Um, so we had a maker space, but it unfortunately has been a, a casualty of coronavirus. Oh, I was going to um, say, what? There's a maker space? Yeah, we, other... we did for a couple of years, but uh, it, it really... Uh, Tyler and I have both realized that we just love working from home. Yeah. And uh, I, if we don't have, we only had a couple of members towards the end, um, and we we bought the tools because we were both makers at heart, and we both had cool ideas. We wanted to just have the tools for ourselves, mm-hmm. and we said, well, if we have these tools, we might as well open them up for people to use. Um, but it really kind of the juggling, taking care of the tools, and teaching people while practicing architecture it was just kind of it was just way too much um yeah that would be a challenging probably just teaching people how to use it so you trust that they're not gonna jack up your stuff because i can't imagine it's cheap equipment either so So we've uh, we've closed down the makerspace but we've definitely kept the tools so (laughs) yeah that's definitely i mean probably one of the biggest pluses Mm -hmm. of being well owning your own business being your own boss and doing architecture is that you can work from home. Absolutely, yeah. So did you guys fully transition to home now? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, so Tyler is gonna work at his home up in Lakehead and then I'm gonna work at mine here in town. We both got offices where we're, we're not wanting anything and we can just kind of relax and do whatever yeah. we want to do. Gotcha, so you guys don't have an actual office space. I'm jealous, to officially. Nope. Oh, well, me too. <laughs> me to be your own too. boss and you get to work from home. Because honestly, yeah, you're right, you don't need the overhead, you don't need the extra costs, yeah. you know, and you need the computer. Yeah, exactly. And if you need to meet with your clients, you can meet really anywhere. Mm-hmm. They have like um, places you can rent out to yeah. now for just. Yeah, I was going to say, how, so how does that work? If you have clients that, you know, want to meet you, do you guys just go out for coffee? Do you just yeah. meet somewhere yeah, in town? Before, and um, Just met at coffee or a coffee shop and just kind of put whatever we're working on on the table or. Um, a lot of Zoom calls lately. Right, oh, absolutely. Yeah. And then a lot of times if it's like a house or a business, we'll just meet at there. I was going to say, I guess you could always meet yeah. at there. Which is, you're going to be there anyway because yeah. you need to make take measurements or mm-hmm. whatever. Just look at it, take pictures, things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Zoom is amazing because yeah. you could share your screen. I mean. Yep. Yeah, we, we've not missed having an office at all, so. Dang, I know. I'm hoping that my work fully transitions me at home too. Like, I don't need to be in my... My all, all my all I need is my laptop. Yeah, it's just so much more. So I do too. Those remote work. So okay, guys, rub it in. Rub it <laughs> I'm in. I'm so sorry. I forgot you went back to work. <laughs> it's okay. She wasn't working on. <laughs> you know what? No, I think going to a job is good for me because otherwise I'd never change out of my pajamas and I would just be like. Oh, what? you know what? I'd in be the like beginning, squirrel. I don't. I don't have. Yeah, no. In the beginning, by everything. It was hard, like two for two weeks, but then I'm I'm loving it now. Like it is so much more efficient. Mm-hmm. I feel and. I feel like I've created more bond with my family, even more, <laughs> right. you know, and just, you know, just have that good family life balance, I feel. Yeah, there's a lot of businesses that have, as a result of Corona, like a lot of corporations are like, hey, we don't need as big of an actual office space because it's more efficient with them at home, so. Right. So you were talking a little bit about being a co-owner. Mm-hmm. You said it was with Tyler. Tyler, yeah, Tyler. good. I was going to say the right well, He name. could have been here yeah. if he wanted. I didn't know you had a partner. Yeah, shout out they Tyler. They usually What's bring up? their partners here. Yeah, if they had round one. two. Yeah, next Tyler time. would be here round two. <laughs> um, but I am curious how it is working with a partner mm-hmm. because I feel like you know you hear both sides of the coin. There's yeah. some partnerships mm-hmm. that work really well. <laughs> There's also horror stories. So how did you guys? 
I mean, how did this partnership well. come together? Uh, so we actually both work together at uh, NMR. Uh, that's mm. what had, um, and we both have uh, very, we're both very similar people in our work ethic and our drive. Um, he's kind of an unrelenting pessimist, and I'm kind of an unrelenting optimist. Oh, so dang. it makes for some pretty interesting <laughs> debates. I love it. Um, but it's probably a really good thing. So it's, <laughs> right. we, uh, we, we always find a middle ground, and it usually works out just fine. Yeah, that's cool. That, I would love to listen to some of those conversations. Because <laughs> <laughs> I go have, on for a long time. So I cool. can't imagine, There's especially for what you guys do. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Really come in and mm-hmm. meet in the middle, like for reals. <laughs> so that's probably is that like what would you would say? Well, you don't have to work together all the yeah. time. You get to be at your home, and he gets to be at his home. Yeah. So that's kind of nice. Mm-hmm. So I was gonna say, what do you think the biggest like balance is for you guys to be? be able to, you know, work together and not... Uh, well, we've, uh, we've found that we're just really honest about the work that we're doing mm-hmm. and about um, kind of our thoughts on, on the process and especially when it comes to creative things that uh, we kind of like just do a throwback to architecture school where we'll just kind of critique the project or the mm-hmm. idea and we'll just sit down and be like, this isn't, this isn't working for me or this is, this is great, I want more of this. Mm-hmm. Um, just like we would have in architecture school and we're just kind of really honest communication and since that was what architecture school was all about, you know, we don't hurt each other's feelings. Yeah. We're used to it. We know that it, it improves the creative process. So yeah. It, it's, it's working great, so. That's so cool. That is really cool. Do you think that it's better working with a man <laughs> than a woman? I, I mean, I just, that. I mean, we'll keep I it real. right answer to that. <laughs> yeah, because you'll never, you'll never know. <laughs> you'll never know. Fair enough. <laughs> I, I feel like it's, it's, it, it depends on the, my time for me, my my life, it's like it depends on what, how old I was. But now I, I don't mind working with both at all. Right. Well, and like you said, at least if it's something that you were kind of trained to going through architecture school in, then it's mm-hmm. it probably wouldn't matter either way. So we'll answer it that way. <laughs> She'd be great with either. Um, <laughs> anyways, we are actually already to our last commercial break, you guys. So. Oh, jeez. I know. It's flying. So... Oh, and I have. <laughs> sponsor Angel yes. over there. Sponsor Angel. <laughs> you can be the sponsor Angel. She's a sponsor She's unicorn. A She's a Fair, enough. Shout, Fair enough. Shout out to Reliefs Trading. They're a 100% USDA certified organic hemp grown at Whole Circle Farms. Um, yeah, the ladies were just here. They gave us the deep freeze. I still have it. I'm still using it. So You're amazing. Good. I'm going to do yoga with Ashley too. So. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, prenatal yoga, right? Mm-hmm. And to, They're amazing. Um, World Financial Group, uh, Max Malari, Life and Health Insurance Agent. Give him a call, you guys. I think he has a Facebook page. Look him up, Max Malari. <laughs> uh, Bohem Salon and Spa, 961 Data Drive, Suite 130. She's officially open. I think she's so thrilled about that. And um, Heck yeah. Get this appointment's right. Just, just get a call, make appointments. Yeah, I believe so. And um, last but not least, our sponsor, Unicorn, <laughs> Sarah Marie Spectrum. She helps you find the magic in you through her creative process with um, photography and videography. She's amazing. If you guys ever want to re- like live a fantasy, she's the one to do it with. Yeah, she's, she has Instagram, Facebook page, website, you name it. Sarah Marie Spectrum, everybody. Yay. Yay. All right, guys, we will be back here shortly on KCNR. This is the Women of Vision Show. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Women of Vision Show here on KCNR. And uh, we are just, I'm learning a lot from (laughs) Miss Haley Anderson. Mrs., excuse me, she's married, boys. So (laughs) this is Haley Anderson, uh, the owner of One Shop. What? I mean, the name? I'm just kind of curious. Is it just because you guys do encompass yeah. like a little bit of everything? Yeah, it's because we had the, uh, the makerspace when we first started up. So we had all the digital tools that we liked to implement in projects like, like Roots. So it's kind of, we can do everything start to finish, you know, fabrication wise. Uh, gotcha. Of our shop. Yeah. That's cool. And like, I really did. I don't know if you guys probably haven't looked at her website unless you were planning on doing a design, mm-hmm. but it's a really cool website and you guys do a lot of really neat work and like I said for some reason when I think architecture I automatically just go to like buildings like you know what I mean like office buildings office space Mm -hmm. those type or like hotels yeah I don't think a lot about residential do you guys do a lot of different residential work too you I know you mentioned the car fire so so we do everything that Reading kind of asks 
of us. So we've done um, a number of car fire rebuilds, and if anyone's followed on social media recently, I've posted a couple of those. Those are coming along really beautifully. They're about to get to the exciting finishes. So uh, check out our Instagram um, at One Shop Reading. So those will have a few of our cool houses that are coming up. Um, and then aside from that, we do uh, we've a couple restaurants like Roots. Um, we helped uh, Fresh Fire Grill with their original design out on Lake Boulevard. Yeah. Um, we've done a few other restaurants. Um, office buildings like TIs, when uh, new tenants move into a space, we will customize the floor plan and, and put together a whole new design for them moving in. Um, let's see, we've done, I don't know, a whole bunch of different things. Uh, this building we're in right now, we've helped the, the owners um, bring it up to code. Yeah, oh, wow. Those buildings in Reading, and uh, they've done a whole bunch of renovations, like the salon next door. Yeah. Uh, Tyler worked with the, the owner, who's an interior designer, on updating that space. And then what used to be Dandelion, uh, we designed an awesome space that's uh, in construction right now. It'll have a sweet ceiling of um, kind of floating foam hexagons that have lights that will be hanging down from the ceiling. So keep an eye out for that. Cool. One. Oh my gosh. So, any, so anything too small or too big for you to nope. get? No. Nope. Yeah, that's yeah. so cool. So you guys will just, as long as it's within your time and schedule, you yeah. you can do it. Yeah, we're, we're open to learning how to do anything. So is it just two of you yeah. doing the thing? Mm -hmm. You guys don't have, have any, any other staff? Nope. Interesting. Yeah, or both, bring any other vendors? No, we're both licensed architects, so uh, we tackle everything just between the two of us. Um, and we will do uh, small-scale mechanical, electrical, and plumbing engineering as well. So that also means you guys do each the bookkeeping, the yep. accounting, yeah, we do <laughs> the marketing. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. crazy. Do you guys ever bring like any interns or volunteers if they ever want to learn, like say a college student who's willing to, uh, we, you know? We've toyed with the idea in the past. Um, it really, we found that the, the market in writing is just so much of a roller coaster. It's like <laughs> as soon as we, we find someone that we want to bring on, it's like, uh, the projects kind of drop off a little bit. Yeah. Um, but we're definitely open to def uh, bringing in people, walking them through what we do. Yeah. Um, we've had a lot of people come and walk through our office back when we had an office, but just uh, look at our projects, our process, mm -hmm. um, and just understand the career. Yeah. And uh, any anyone who survived architecture school would love to just uh, give you a speech on what you should do in architecture school. And yeah. Which to go to. I think we bore a lot of high school students. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure some high school students are like thinking of doing it. I knew my brother wanted to jump into it, mm -hmm. but uh, I think it would have helped if he sat down and at least did some internship. Yeah. You know, unpaid it's, internship just to kind of see if that's something he wants to do. It you is know? a big undertaking. And then they, they really try and like kill you the first year oh. to make sure you're, you know, that you're definitely interested in what you're doing. Is it like a lot of math? I mean, I'm sorry. I'm, I uh, don't know anything about architecture. Like I know engineering. Of math. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they like to keep it pretty simple for the architects on the math. Um, I mean, you, you have to go through calculus, but, but not engineering levels of math. Yeah. So it, do you good. have to like learn how to draw kind of like what's um, Yeah, so in architecture school we'll have uh, It's a five well the school I went to is a five-year bachelor's um, That gives you an accreditation to get your license afterwards mm. at Cal Poly and then all five of those years You uh, you have a design studio where you're learning to draw you're learning to model everything in the computer oh. uh, kind of learn those gradually throughout the years um, you're presenting your ideas um, in front of people uh, public constructive criticism. Yeah. That's how we have our tough skins. Um, <laughs> and then you do look like you have tough kids, <laughs> skin. And then you, uh, alongside of that, you take all of the math, physics, um, just to kind of support the architecture side of it. Was there some point in school where you were like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore? <laughs> no, no. I, I hadn't questioned. Yeah, no, you've yeah. always loved Not me. until last year. Oh, yeah. my, my first year being out on my own that I kind of look at Tyler and I was like, uh, I don't... I'm struggling to see the uh, the uh, upside of this right now. <laughs> it's really stressful. Yeah, because there's a human aspect to it. Like you talk to the owners, yeah. you know, and yeah, it's the full spectrum of running a business. Everything from the bookkeeping yeah. to finding clients and then introducing uh, yourselves and kind of that initial client interaction and problem solving like there on the fly, mm -hmm. and then all the way through. Uh, the code portions, the drawing portions, and then dealing with the building department, and dealing with contractors. Yeah, so you see a lot of people. Start to finish. Yeah. 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 Like in school, did they teach you like how to deal with 
no. people. <laughs> no. <laughs> or it was all technical stuff, yeah. huh? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, architecture school does not really approach the so you'd, practice side of it. Yeah, so you yeah. learned your customer service mm -hmm. and your on professionalism the <laughs> on the job. <laughs> Dang, that's crazy. It's got to be challenging, too, working with a lot of different personalities yeah. and different... Oh, yeah. That's a lot of different... Um, aspects to a build. Yeah, yeah. So architects are generally considered like the generalists, right? Because we have to know a little bit about everything. everything. Yeah. Because yeah. you got to deal with the contractor too. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the contractors are kind of... Yeah, contractors, the engineers, the <laughs> yeah. building department. I mean, start the to government. Finish, a lot of, yeah, a lot of bureaucracy. Yeah. It's, the skill set, it just keeps growing. You're a patient day. woman, aren't you? I can, yeah. I was yeah, going to say, you, I feel like you'd have learned. to be. I've met <laughs> some architects and they all have this like similar vibe of like just being patient mm -hmm. and just calm. Good listeners. And you kind of have that, you know, it's like, yeah, you just, yeah, you exactly. You be easily rattled. Yeah. <laughs> or do you go home and be like, <laughs> This is so not a job for me. <laughs> I'm not oh, I learning know. more. I'm like, no. I'm... I can't imagine talking to many different people in different levels. Absolutely. Um, so kind of, I'm curious, do you guys have a plan or like a, a vision for how you want to continue to impact the community here? Or um, So this is a, a really big question. Um, I know, right? Now that we only <laughs> yeah, have yeah, four Haley, minutes gosh. left. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about this one, and the only way I can kind of wrap my head around how to answer it is, I'm sure most people have seen the movie Inception, right? Where the world is changing. Oh, yeah. I that's love real. that Just movie. So no, like that's that's my brain, <laughs> like every day. So, no way. Like seeing, you know, walking around town, like yeah, I can see what could be. And so the only way I can answer this question is that you know I have ideas and visions on how to improve spaces and how to take advantage of some missed opportunities around town, like the riverfront and like downtown areas and. So, I'm uh, sure it bothers you sometimes. Yeah, but, but I mean, it's also an opportunity, right? Yeah. So, uh, all I could do was want to help bring that to life in, in any way possible. So, it's the only way I can answer that question. Yeah, it yeah. is kind try of a... And, try and get, get to what I see as being possible. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, though. Mm -hmm. That's just really neat. Um, Has there been any organizations you've reached out in town to just kind of collaborate with or... Um, uh, a few, um, so at, right after the car fire, a whole bunch of the local architects around town, um, we got together with, uh, there was a social media page called Envision Reading. Yeah, um, I've seen them. They, they were already established and uh, we, group of architects, um, kind of reached out to them and, and joined. So uh, I was kind of helping to steer that for a oh, little that's while. Cool. Um, we all got really busy, so it's kind of been quiet for yeah. a while. Um, but just trying to use that social media page or pages as a way of reaching out and, and just posting and sharing good mm -hmm. ideas that promote um, ideas that that really build the community aspect, mm -hmm. um, whether that's um, through more pedestrian and bike-friendly spaces and, and roads, um, just anything that would really help the environment between buildings. Right. Between buildings. That's so cool. Did you help at all with what's being be done down here downtown. I wish I could say yes, but it was. Uh, not Are you excited, excited about it? Yes. I'm sure you're excited to see how it's oh, going to turn out. Yeah, and I, I would look forward to one day being able to participate in projects around. Yeah, more okay, projects around do, do you go to the meeting sometimes? They're yeah. I don't even like know if they're necessarily are they open type meetings that you can. I thought there was one that was. I forgot which one it was. <laughs> well, do you guys have any like special projects or? Anything that's coming up here that you're really excited about that you can kind of give us a tidbit? Um, we've got some just exciting things happening on projects that are in progress right now, like the houses okay. I mentioned. Just keep an eye out on our pages for cool updates on those. Um, one of our clients, uh, Old Shasta Coffee Company, um, we helped them on their, their first uh, TI of their space, and we're going to help them with their annex next door. So we're starting that one here for oh, soon. Oh, cool. That's um, going to be fun. Yeah. Very, very cool. Um, and where exactly can we find you? We need your website. Yeah. Your, I know you already mentioned your Instagram page, but feel free to give it to us again so that we can <laughs> yeah, stalk um, you and see what you're up to. Yeah. So our, our website is oneshop.community, and it's the full word community. Um, and then our Instagram is oneshopwriting, and then Facebook, just uh, search oneshop. Thank you so much for sitting down with us tonight no and learning us some stuff. Yeah, Because <laughs> it's, re it's really a lot more intriguing than, mm -hmm. honestly, I, I'm not sure. Than I anticipated. Like I said at the beginning, kind mm -hmm. of architecture seems a little meh. Yeah. It sounds so much more interesting. So <laughs> thank you for taking your time out tonight and sitting Thanks with us. And, and uh, thank you, everyone, for listening and tuning into our show. And thanks for 
hanging out, ladies. We are, we are women, women of vision. vision.